Hello class, uh, we're supposed to be on module 12, but I'm skipping that one and we're going to go to module 13. What I want to do is give you more time uh, to uh, do your course project, to get it completed. And I've got some materials involved in this and the next module to enhance uh, the, your productivity in that area as well. Now, we've covered most of the kinds of tests anyway that that anyone in their right mind would want to cover while doing a dissertation. However, there are some expanded models that uh, you might want to look at, but you know how to do it now, and you can go online anywhere and find videos that show you how. So let's go on with uh, what we're doing is moving to uh, uh, module 13, not going to do 12. We're going to talk about Cronbach's alpha and a uh, little thing that I say, remind me what your study is about again. I guess I'm getting old, but no, I'll tell you why I want to do that in a moment. There's a reason for it. Besides me. Let's see what happens here. Yep, we've skipped module 12, and uh, it's to give you more time to work on your course project, because the final part of that's due on the 7th, and then I think I sent you a memo telling you that I wanted to see a uh, uh, draft version before that, a couple of weeks before that. I can't remember even what date I put on that. Obviously, it was November or something, but you look at it. Okay, this module 13 has two components to it. And uh, the first component, each of you will develop an overview of your course project for other students in the class to read. That's my reason. A template is provided. I don't want you guessing about what you've got to put down. I want certain things there, so and I'll tell you why I want that later. You will review the topics in the second part. You will review the topics of reliability, validity, research methodologies, and perform a Cronbach's Alpha test of reliability for a sample survey and its data. You've heard about Cronbach's Alpha. I'm going to doubt if any of you have ever really performed Cronbach's Alpha to determine the reliability of a survey that you may have developed. But uh, you hear about it all the time, I'm sure, but we're going to do it. Let's talk about uh, this first thing we're going to go through, the tell me more about your study kind of question. And uh, what we need is a couple pieces of paper, basically, from you that another person can look at and get a good idea about your study. We need something that can give us a description, like maybe a title, you know. You need a good title. Don't try to get too funny with that title, but get yourself a title. And then what is the subject about? What What is your little research project about? And only about two or three sentences. I don't want anything here. I just want to, I want something I can read very quickly, and I want something other people can read very quickly and look at and say, oh, yeah, I understand what he or she is going to do, why they're going to do it, and that sort of thing. And then, uh, so you got the title, you got what's the subject about, and then what is your big question that you want to answer in your research? We call that the overarching question. But what's the big question anyway? What's the big deal? Uh, and then, how have you broken down that big question into smaller questions? So we're looking at those research questions that we're going to try to answer with some sort of hypothesis. So that's the next step you need to put out. What hypotheses have you developed for these questions? So we're down to the big question, your smaller research questions, and by the way, I'll accept no less than three, but no more than five. You have to have three, four, or five questions to get any credit for this project. Okay, what hypothesis have you developed for these questions? And I want to see those. And remember, the tense in a hypothesis is there is no, you know, the null hypothesis. And use the null hypothesis. I saw somewhere the other day someone used the uh, alternative hypothesis, the motivated hypothesis. We ain't going to do that. I, I know you'd like to, you didn't, but we're not going to do that. Um, what are the variables of the study? That is really important that you can identify the study variables and how they will be measured. Now, you're going to have to talk about the dependent variable, and I, I put an S on that in this 
a template I gave you, but I also said, I hope you only have one dependent variable per hypothesis. Because then if you don't, you get into those multiple layers of analysis. And, and we don't need that. People really don't even want to read that. We want to keep this as simple as we can. We really, I, I hate to tell you this, but we want to keep this down to a t-test, an ANOVA, or a chi-square. I promise you, no one else wants to read or see anything else. But if you want to, I'll push you right on through it. We'll make it. But anyway, uh, what are your variables? What's the dependent variable? What? Think about this as an, a true experiment where you, you have a treatment group and then you have an outcome. In other words, you do something to somebody, like you put a fire underwater, what happens? The temperature rises. That's the dependent variable. How, you know, how long, how fast, what temperature does it rise to? That's a dependent variable. But, you know, how do you affect that? You affect that by putting fire under it or something or rubbing two sticks together. The independent variables, IV, I vary something. Remember that. The independent variables, the initials are IV, I vary it. The dependent variable is just that. It depends on what happens in those independent variables. Independent variables can be things like socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, uh, how tall you are. A lot of things can be the independent variables. So we want to know how you're going to measure those. So when you decide about your variables, we want to know what the measurements are. Are they going to be in feet and inches, time, or what are they going to be measured in? And the dependent variables. A lot of times, a dependent variable is ultimately a t an ultimate test score, and you're going to have some, you want to know how socioeconomic status, the independent variables, uh, play and affect and, and the dependent variable test scores. So you segregate your group into high, low, medium, and socioeconomic status, and you look at test scores, and you say, is there some kind of a connection there? Do uh, high socioeconomic status students do better on this test or worse or whatever? So think of it like that. And I want to know when you tell me this, you'll see in the template what your measures are going to be. Uh, then once you've kind of got your variables in mind, the dependent variable, once in your own mind, you get that fixed and in independent variables, what statistic do you plan to use? What statistic are you going to use in that question? Now, I really hope you can be consistent all the way through, but it's not likely. Here's what I find. A lot of times people do a t-test one time because they have only two variables, uh, independent variables, to, to look at. And then when they get more than that, then obviously you have to do the ANOVA. So that happens quite often. So don't worry about that if that's your case. You know, one time you might be looking at males and females, and that would call for a t-test. And the next time you might be looking at uh, socioeconomic status and have it in three groups, and then you're going to look at it in an ANOVA. That's just that simple. That happens, and that's forgivable sin. You can do that. And after you you find out what statistic, and you tell me what you're going to use as a, as a statistic, what do you really think is going to happen? And finally, here down here, what do you suspect will be the outcome of your study? For each hypothesis, what do you really think is going to be the outcome? What do you believe is going to be the outcome for five-year teachers, three-year teachers, and two-year teachers for the reasons that they re they retire? I don't say retire. They quit the profession at one, two, or three years. You know, what do you think is going to be the main reason? So I want to know what you think the outcome is going to be. Some people say that can be biased, but it's not. You just need to be able to tell that. So anyway, look at that. And here's the part of the template. Here, here's the first two parts, the three parts to it. Part one, what's your topic title? What's your dissertation title going to be? And in two or three sentences, give me a little overview of that. And the other people that are going to read it, your fellow students, actually. And then what's your overarching question? And then from that, we're going to go to the part two here. And you're going to have to have at least three. You see that I've got RQ1, RQ2, RQ3, et cetera. You can't go past RQ5, not in this project. And three is plenty, so limit it any way you want to here. But you're going to tell me what the re research question is. You're going to ask it, I guess. And then you're going to write the hypothesis for that question. And then you're going to tell me what the dependent variables are, what 
will you enlist them and tell me how you will measure them? Is it going to be in feet and in inches? Is it going to be in time? Is it going to be in some score on a test? What is it going to be? And you need to be able to tell that. And the year you say, hopefully you'll have only one dependent variable. IVs, list them and tell me what the measure will be for them. Gosh, that could be age. It could be different kinds of groupings. It could be elementary teachers, high school teachers, uh, superintendents. Independent variables can be a lot of different things. They're very, you vary those. When you put a, someone in a group to be the variable, you varied that group. You varied, the, that's a variance. What statistic right here, what statistics will you use uh, to determine HO and what outcome do you expect? And repeat this for at least three and no more than five hypotheses in total. So that's how that looks. Now, the next thing I want you to do is give a look at what a data table would look like, your raw data. So if you're talking about schools and how they perform relative to other schools, and uh, let's say you're looking at uh, alternative schools and why the placements are in our alternative schools. So you look at school one and dependent variable might be uh, uh, what kind of placements are, are most prominent or how many placements, but then you might want to divide that up based on socioeconomic status. status. Are there more poor kids in alternative school than there are wealthy kids? Are there more uh, different ethnicities that you find in alternative school than one than the other? Or if you're doing something with teachers and sick days, you know, you could, that could be the number of sick days per school. Uh, age could be an, an independent variable. The point is, make us, and I don't want over two or three, you know, school one, two, and three. That's enough. I just want to see. We want to see what this looks like so we'll know how to help you if you're doing the right thing or not. Okay, so here's what it is. That's in the thing. Student provides an overview. Here's the, you go to this point right here and get the uh, templates you're going to use. And so that tells all about it. And here's what we're going to do with that. Let me go back. We're going to share, I'm going to divide you up in groups after, right after I get these back. And people that are all doing chi-squares, I'm going to have you guys work together. And people that are doing t-tests work together in ANOVAs and that sort of thing. I think you can help each other. You can look at what each other are doing and give you some ideas about how you can do yours better. I'm going to have to hurry. I'm going to run out of time. Cronbach's Alpha. Okay, that's all about estimating the internal uh, validity, internal the internal reliability and accuracy of a survey. And you know, you can't have validity without reliability. Reliability has to come first. So we have to know about the reliability of your survey. I'm going to run out of time here, but what you're going to do first is you are going to define these terms. I don't care where you get these. You can Google these, whatever you want, uh, and put down an answer. And really, you're supposed to cite every answer you give me. And, and I, that'd be fine, too. But you, you need to know the meaning of all these words, generator reliability, test, retest, reliability, and, and all that. We're going to do Cronbach's Alpha, which is kind of like a, a test, retest, reliability. But that's what we're going to do. Now, here you've got a sample in there. Here's a survey that was, has six questions on it. See, six questions. And here are the responses. It's a Likert scale survey. And it's answered by about 15 people. And you're going to look at these, well, I don't know, whatever that is, number of students. And uh, you're going to look at the first three answers are about, uh, not about television, but uh, let's see, what are they about? They're about task value and anxiety. So the task value. And you're going to follow the methodology we have in one of the videos. And you're going to do a... Uh, Cronbach's Alpha and find the reliability of this thing. And we're always looking for 1.7 or better. And we like to have a 0.8 or a 0.9. And it'll tell you about that in there. So then you're going to answer these three questions here at the bottom. Uh, determine the Cronbach's Alpha score and then report it. If you wanted to improve the measure of reliability, what question would you remove? And if you remove it, what? how much better is the Cronbach's Alpha? It'll tell you all that. Look at the video. Hey, good luck, and I'll catch you on the other side.